Hey guys, see Drama Invasion here, back with a new first impressions video. So I have three dramas to talk about today. Let's just start with A Romance of Little Forest. This one stars Esther Yu and Jang Bin Bin. I feel like right off the bat, I can see how this could be a hit or miss for so many people. I definitely do see the negatives and I'll talk about it, but I feel like part of me is just so biased since I really enjoyed Love Between Fairy and Devil. So I'm still in that mindset. So seeing Esther Yu, we kind of are just transitioning from there to here. Like I said, I thought it's a perfect time and such a smart marketing strategy because to put her in a drama right after a highly beloved and successful one, um, a romance of Little Forest will probably do well. And so far, I think that that's the case, even though um, I don't think anyone can deny that the female lead is quite annoying. And in real life, definitely do not agree with this. I hate it for male leads too, but also there is that double standard that most people are just willing to watch like male lead do the same thing, basically stalking the female lead, doing the most and calling it like, oh, it's so romantic, etc., etc. At least here, she's shameless about it and like she's very brazen and I think it's kind of funny and entertaining how ridiculous her antics are. For sure, it's one of those dramas that um, you don't need to really think so much about. There's no like deep hidden message or anything. It's just a lighthearted rom-com. I think 35 episodes um, might be an issue. I don't know yet. So far, it's fine. The pacing at least. Um, I don't know if it's going to get draggy later on. I usually prefer dramas. I think maybe like 25 to 30 episode mark is good for modern rom-coms. Once again, with every single Esther Yu drama, I would say that if you didn't enjoy her voice in Love Between Fairy and Devil and you couldn't really get over that, then this is probably going to be like 10 times worse for you because she goes full on cutesy mode here. It doesn't really bother me because I'm not binging it. I usually watch this like when it comes out one episode a day while I eat breakfast or something. It's just a lighthearted show to start my day. Chemistry wise, I really love the posters and stuff. It looks just so adorable and I just can't wait for his heart to melt and fall completely in love with her. I am a sucker for the cold male lead with a sweetheart and here like he's definitely the no nonsense like i don't really like talking to even my female students or any females in general and she kind of just sticks to him like glue and somehow it kind of works and i don't know i think it's fun um one thing that i would like to compliment the writers is that she's not just a brainless female lead i really like that there's parts where i think there's this like creepy president guy that came in and he's like i'm gonna take your sponsorship away if you don't do xyz if you don't like date me overall he's just so creepy and she tried her best to remain you know civil and kind of dance around it but he couldn't get a clue at all and yeah he was just horrible but the way she handled it, I really like that she stood up for herself. Yeah, she could be sweet and cute or whatever, but when it comes down to it, I really like that she's not afraid to call anyone out. I like that they do show a little bit of um, not just the glitz and glam of being a beauty blogger or an influencer, but the negatives in the entertainment industry as well. And I'm glad that she just has a strong personality during those moments as well. Next, let's move on and talk about Thousand Years For You. This is a mix between a Shensha and Republican drama. So compared to dramas like, um, what is it? The Kunlun Mountain one, which stars Shu Kai and Zhang Chushi. That one had a similar vibe going on, but I couldn't get into that one. But for some reason, I'm really enjoying this one. I love the editing. Once again, Aichi proves to be my favorite Chinese network for dishing out enjoyable dramas that have different types of costuming. The female lead style works on her. I really like these steampunk vibes. Li Chin is um, perfect here. I think that she's not too arrogant, but she does still give that strong female lead vibes. I've seen some people um, say that she's annoying. I didn't see that at all. I think that compared to her other previous roles, um, this is probably one of the best ones that I've seen. 
I like the pacing so far. We haven't gotten so much romance. It's more um, a slow burn in that sense. There is some back and forth between them that is so funny. She's sometimes like super self-aware and her hilarious dynamic with the second male lead and her sidekick make for a lot of chuckles along the way. There's this scene where she realizes that the male lead is super powerful and he can basically end her with a Thanos snap and everyone if he wants to. She freaks out and she plays this one-sided mind game with him. It was so funny. I do have to say that I feel like the male lead is not doing it for me. It could definitely be the writing. I feel like um, it doesn't have to be Alan Wren. You can literally replace him with any actor and it would be the same thing just because the male lead hasn't really done anything memorable so far. His character is just so cookie cutter standard in um, C dramas. I feel like even though I bash Blue Whisper, at least that one, his character was a little bit more interesting and it had a couple of more sides to it. He just feels really flat in this one. I love that the whole backstory and they really talk about these races, um, the distinction between various species, the human clan, the spirit clan, and how relevant it is to real life social issues such as racism, prejudice, and discrimination. One of my favorite episodes has to be like around episode 11 or 12, the whole night market. I think it's like a mysterious um, spirit clan night market place is just so beautiful. We also have to point out that there's been so many of these instances where in Shansha dramas, we always have these like whales coming in. Like I spotted one in Immortal Samsara and Love Between Fairy and Devil as well. I guess it's like a popular trend now, but I guess it works. I really love the opening and ending song on this one. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Last but definitely not least is a drama I literally started off on a whim because I've seen some people in my comment section just say how creepy this drama is and that was exactly why I wanted to start it. Um, so it's called Disappearing Child. I've been seeing it around the internet for a while now, especially on Doban. It's been receiving so much love and um, even though it's a more low-key mystery drama, I like that there's only 12 episodes so... It was on my radar. I was going to watch it after all the episodes get subbed and comes out. I think there should be like 10 or 11 episodes at the moment. And another piece of good news is that even though it's a Mango TV drama, which we know is known is for their like really horrendous subbing style, they kind of just throw it in an automatic system. However, this isn't the case. I don't know if it's just like short dramas just because of the length and they just kind of put more effort into it but the subs are pretty good and so far I'm quite early on into it I'm like around four episodes in but I just wanted to jump on and talk about it because I'm enjoying it so much it reminds me of one of my probably my favorite um, Chinese mystery drama which is the horizon tower um, that's the short form the long name is like a murderous affairs in Horizon Towers. It should be on YouTube. I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, this one, as the title suggests, it follows a family and one day their child goes missing. I can't really describe it, but right off the bat, there's this um, feeling that you just know something is slightly off. I would say that it's similar to how you would feel throughout the whole drama. Almost like a female's intuition, when you can't really like pinpoint what's wrong with something, but you know something's off. And it's kind of this way all throughout with every single character that you meet. Even if you're trying to root for them or whatever, you're like, huh, hold up. I feel like there's something wrong and there's something that they're hiding from us. That's just so compelling. You see a whole bunch of characters, different neighbors, which is one of my favorite tropes. And as you meet them and you get to know their backstory, you kind of find out that, huh, maybe they all have a motive or some reason why they want this child gone or just um, some type of interaction with them that was like creepy or like red flags all the way. I really, really enjoy dark toned um, dramas so much. 
and this one they cinematically they chose to like make it very washed out it's like gray toned but not too dark to the point where you can't see anything so i really like the color grading on this it just adds more to that creepy element i thought it was so engaging all through like the first three to four episodes from episode one and just how they opened it um, with this main character being in a loop it was so creepy also anything with um number four i'm pretty sure like the main characters live on the fourth floor or something in asian countries especially china it's a taboo number it's a very unlucky connotation it means death so i guess you can say it's kind of like the 13th floor or the number 13 in um western cultures so if you like anything similar to this where like you don't know what's going on your neighbors are you know kind of creepy everyone is suspicious in their own way and it's like a slow burn mystery but so addictive and you cannot stop clicking on that next episode button after like you finish two episodes i highly recommend the k-drama strangers from hell that one has like very similar vibes to this one maybe a little bit amped up in the horror aspect um that one's on netflix or once again a murderous affairs in horizon towers was phenomenal that one also has two cops that comes to the scene and they kind of interview this um, tower basically an apartment building as well i'm just really happy in general that c dramas are finally pushing the boundaries with these shorter dramas i think it was the ichi light on series that kind of sparked this interest and so many other companies started doing this thing where they just do small episodes but like high quality drama that's has like mystery slice of life darker topics etc do let me know if you have any other suggestions for sea dramas in particular that's a little bit darker i feel like since it's still like a very new type of thing there aren't too many options but let me know anyways if you have any good drama suggestions hope you enjoyed this one what are your thoughts on any of these dramas let me know in the comments below check out links to my previous playlist on videos such as sea drama updates if you're not caught up with that my Kofi coffee page is linked down below for anyone who wants to buy me a coffee there. You can leave a message. But of course, you can always like, comment, subscribe for free. And yeah, just show your support that way. I highly appreciate it. And it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next video.